Hi folks. I think the important thing for us all to remember before we get into today's video is that there's no such thing as too many books, only insufficient shelving. Right, so we've got a bunch to do. And I'm going to start with one that has a little story associated with it. So this is Robert Silverberg's Up the Line. A couple of months back I picked up a, a first edition hardback in the Sidrick and Jackson uh, of this book. And it was in very nice condition and I was quite happy to have it on my shelves. Uh, but easy come, easy go. Uh, Steve over at Outlaw, Book, Outlaw Bookseller spotted it in one of my, um, in that haul video. And um, uh, eventually made contact with me and basically made me an offer I couldn't refuse for it. Um, it he wanted it for his, uh, to plug a gap in his Silverberg first editions collection. And um, he effectively did a part exchange for me. So some money changed hands and um, and he also sent me his characteristically pristine paperback first edition in the uh, Fontana science fiction edition. So uh, I, you know, much as I liked that um, Silverberg copy, uh, I only paid 2 99 for it and Steve offered me considerably more than that. Uh, and I got a nice copy of the book which is really the important thing to add to my shelf. So a fair exchange is no robbery, as they say. So I'm very happy to have that. So that's the first one. I uh, yes, just uh, so I'm recording this on Saturday the 12th uh, of August. Yesterday on Friday the 11th, I popped out as I sometimes do at lunchtime and quickly made my way to the Oxfam Bookshop in Woodley, uh, where I get pretty consistent stream of really quite good science fiction books. And I went, I actually went earlier in the week. I had Monday and Tuesday off last week. So I popped over there to see what they had. And the answer, not much. I will get, there are a few things I've picked up, which I, which I will get to. Um, but I am, um, as I usually do, I uh, I popped my head around the back room and asked, you know, have you got anything else um, science fiction-y in the back there? And he said, I do. Uh, I've just had a, a load in, but I haven't priced them up yet. So you have to come back in a, a couple of days. So I thought, okay, well, that's blown it. I, I won't be able to get back until Friday, um, you know, three or four days later and um, it'll all have gone. But anyway, I popped over yesterday, as I said, and and there was a shit ton of really good condition vintage sci-fi on their shelves. So I walked out with um, quite a lot of books and I'm going to take you through them now. So there were a few, five or six, A. Van Vogt books, all of them in really pretty good condition. This one does have a little mark on it. I'm not sure if that's a stain or a sticker residue. It's I haven't um, done anything to clean these up yet, so that might they might um, come off. But anyway, so this is the Silky. I've got quite a few A.E. Van Vogt books, which I acquired mostly through the influx that I got a couple of months ago from the infamous Dave of Tarlhurst's library that he gave me. Uh, but uh, I've been adding to it, and I have um, several more to add. So that's a, a nice copy. I don't know anything much about that. The Silky is a living spaceship. It's impervious to heat and cold, virtually indestructible and capable of travelling at supersonic speeds. Well, you'd hope so if it's a spaceship, wouldn't you? Um, so that's that. And then we've got The Wizard of Lynn. Which I, which I, The image for which seemed familiar, and I was kind of half convinced I already have it, but I did check the magic spreadsheet before I walked out of the shop. I do not. And a subsequent check of my shelves confirms that I don't have it, so that's all cool. So in this one, um, so this is a sequel actually to Empire of the Atom. I wonder if I've got that. Let's see. Uh, <coughs> bear with me, I'll be back. Where were we? Yes, The Wizard of Lynn is the sequel to The Empire of the Atom, which I do have. Uh, so that's one that I already had on my shelves, probably from Dave's collection. Um, and uh, so this is the sequel. I think this one is... Published in 1960, sorry, 75. So this is the first um, New English Library, but I don't think it'll be the first paperback edition. Um, it was published seven years before this, but yeah. So those two go together. A nice pair. I don't know if there are any more in the sequence or if it was just a double. Um, but anyway, this is set. Um, the Earth after an atomic holocaust has reverted to a strange kind of barbarism where men could build spaceships but could not communicate except by the most primitive of means, smoke signals. That sounds a bit bizarre, doesn't it? Um, so, let me put that back on the shelves. So that's The Wizard of Lynn. And then we've got The Mind Cage, another A. Van Vogt, again in pretty good condition. Um, it's a panther. 
I would guess mid 70s from the price. Yeah, reprinted 1975. It, but in terms of its condition, it's essentially pristine. The spine is oops, wrong way up. Is clean, not faded, noticeably so. And the back is also in good condition. There's a bit of a crease there, but you know, for a book that's getting on for 50 years old, that's in really good condition. It's a recurring theme, actually. These are many of these are in really good condition. So that's another one. The Man with a Thousand Names, another Avon Vote. Cool cover art. Well, I initially thought there was a spaceship with wings, but there's a dragon. Uh, 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 well, I don't know what it is. Fuck knows. A, a space creature of some kind attacking a spaceship. Um, again, in really good condition. The spine is also good. Nothing wrong with it. There is a bit of a tiny scuff at the bottom of the the spine there for, for wear, but nothing to write home about. That's the back in really good condition. And we've got yet another Avon Vote Renaissance. That's quite a nice cover. It, um, again, not to be boring about it or anything, but it's in really good condition. Back is with a bit of a clean, but it's otherwise in good nick. And then the last one of these is a Panther from the 60s. <clears throat> Away and Beyond. I think these are short stories. Yes, they are. There are 10 short stories in there. First published in Panther in 63. This is a 68 reprint. Price 5 shillings. By Bob, 25p in old money. That is rather nice. Also in really good condition. What can you do if they're there? You have to get them when they're in that good condition. So what have we got? Uh, Frederick Pohl, the abominable, easy for me to say, the abominable Earthman. This is an old one. I think it must be, it's a US edition actually. And it was printed in 1963. And I think it's a first edition. It's a short story collection. It's a bit of spine creasing and a bit of chipping on the spine. That's the rear. But considering it's 60 years old-ish, that's not bad. Now I picked I picked this up without checking that I had it in my um, magic spreadsheet because I was certain that I didn't. Uh, I actually do have a copy of it. Let me see if I can find it. Yes, I do have it. I think this would have come from Dave's collection, but it is pretty tatty. It's got a sort of welded on price sticker, which I couldn't be bothered to try to remove. The spine's a bit knackered. And, um, and the, it's generally it's a beaten up copy. Perfectly good reading copy. So this is exactly the same edition from exactly the same year, but it's in. It's not quite mint because there's some sort of chipping on the spine there, but it's very tidy. You know, one of them is very clean. One of them's a bit battered. So that's an easy decision. I'll keep this lad. The old one will go to charity or elsewhere. It will be moved on. Uh, Jack Vance. Big Planet, a uh, fantastic world where beauty and grotesque evil dwell uneasily together. Man reads the back of the book. Uh, the Barjanum was intent on conquering the entire planet for himself, etc, etc. So it's kind of science fantasy type affair. In, actually, I might go as far as to say that this is in mint condition. It, there's nothing wrong with it. It was printed in 1977. It's it's mint. There's nothing wrong with it. There's not a mark on it. There's no creasing. The spine's in really good condition. There's no chipping. Nothing. No, well, maybe a tiny bit, a tiny, tiny bit of sort of shelf around the bottom there. But otherwise it's in top condition. Then we've got a Robert Silverberg, Shadrach in the Furnace. I recently finished a Silverberg book up the line, my second one, which was awesome. So happy to add to my little collection. Uh, this I think is probably more like very good The mint. It's got some creasing on the spine and a bit of kind of chipping on the edge, but it's not faded. The rear is in pretty good condition, as is the as is the front. And then I've got so there are two Brian Aldis books that I picked up from the aforementioned Dave of Tilehurst, which are up on my shelves. I won't get them down. Um, which were uh, kind of short story collections, Galactic Empires, I think they were called one and two. And there are another two books in that same set um, that he did. Um, and this is one of them. This is a bit of a tatty copy, Space Opera. And it is a bunch of short stories, uh, 
Asimov and Vote Bradbury and some lesser known gems allegedly rescued from obscurity from long forgotten pulp magazines. So it's a shame it's not in brilliant condition. That that mark on there is probably will clean off, um, but it is otherwise a little bit tatty. Uh, another Brian Aldiss, uh, written by him this time, The Saliva Tree, which sounds delightful. Um, actually, I'm wrong. So this is a collection of short stories, and including Saliva Tree, which is a, a short novel or novella, which was written to mark the centenary of H.G. Wells' birth. And then there's another nine stories that go with it. Interesting image on the front. I thought I was imagining a face, but I'm seeing it in reverse. Yeah, there is a face in there. And then I have another uh, another one here, uh, an old one, uh, Penguin 3 Bob from back in the day. It must be early 60s, I would have thought. 63, yeah. So this, I think, might actually be a first edition, UK first edition, in paperback anyway. A Case of Conscience. The year is 2049, the place Lithia, second planet of the solar type star Alpha Arietis. A commission of four scientists from Earth studying Lithia for the UN has discovered a remarkable new world. The Lithians have fast jet aircraft, but no telephones, lucky them. Magnets are unknown, but they're able to use static electricity in ways not thought of on Earth, etc, etc. Nice, a nice copy, given, again, it's 60 years old, it's in pretty good condition. A little bit scuffed on the edges, a bit creased on the spine, and there is some... A small tear on the on the base of the spine just from being dragged on the shelves but uh otherwise it's in pretty tasty condition so uh, i have um cities in flight on my tbr pile for this month uh, by fact and i have the the omnibus edition which has all four of the books uh, it, which were originally published separately so this is the first one um they shall have stars which is a sort of distant prequel it's in perfect condition it well yeah, it's, it's not unmarked. The pages are a bit yellowed, as they usually are. This was published in 1974 in Arrow. So that's pretty cool. Obviously, that means now I'll have to look out for the other three separate editions, which I'm now missing. We've got uh, Robert Sheckley options in the pan lozenge. Um, I'm slowly, I think I'm about 12 now, I think I've got, of, of the 78 in total that there are. Um, so I'm slowly finding them. This one isn't in great condition. It's got a couple of creases. Uh, and um, it's a bit scuffed, but it'll do for now. Most importantly, it's a perfectly good reading copy, so at some point I'll get to that. We've got Other Dimensions, which is a short story collection, or rather anthology, ed um, edited by Robert Silverberg. It's a collection if it's all by the same author, an anthology if it's by different authors. So it's an anthology, and that contains writers such as Heinlein, Clark, Silverberg himself, Alfred Bester, and a few others that I don't recognise. It's not in great condition, it's a bit tatty, but one can't complain. Uh, and this is a Fred Hoyle and John Elliott collaboration, A for Andromeda, which has their very briefest of blurbs on the back. From 200 light years across the universe comes a message of terror, which is charming. This one dates back to 19, uh, it's a reissue in 1969, so first published in 62. Quite a scary cover on the front, in, in pretty good condition. This one is pretty much perfect. It's uh, by Frank Herbert, who, if you didn't already know, was the author of Dune. Uh, the Saratoga Barrier. Don't know much about that. Cool cover on the front. I haven't read much of Frank Herbert outside of the Dune books, actually, so I, I have like a whole, sh well, getting on for a, a whole shelf full, a, a, a small shelf uh, of them, so I should read some at some point. But that's quite a slender, slender book, so that would be an easy one to bite off. And that's the back with the Pennington Dune cover um, as the uh, evidence that Frank Herbert wrote Dune. The first of two copies of Slaughterhouse Five in this hall. So this is the one that I picked up yesterday from the from the vintage sort of Aladdin's Cave in Woodley, which so it's a reprint from 1977. It's in the it's in the uh, Panther basic cover. It's in it's in okay condition. So it's another Fred Hoyle this time with his Jeffrey Hoyle. I think he's his son maybe. Um, Fifth Planet. I thought that was a, a big caterpillar at first, but it's of course five spheres one behind the other. A convincing as convincing and mystifying and exciting as the Black Cloud. This new adventure by world famous astronomer Fred Hoyle and his son. So it is his son records the first landing on the grassy slopes of the deceptively peaceful planet Achilles. So I don't know if it's the 
if the planet appears in our solar system or if you know it's a fifth planet in a different solar system i guess i'll find out when i read it but then we've got just um beefing up my john Wyndham collection there's some short stories this one's in pretty good condition edited by angus wells 1932 to 1949 uh what i haven't checked yet is if if these same stories appear in the other collection seeds of time and consider her ways which which i have in various other formats so uh, i'll have to um, i have to see but these are from his early writing so perhaps not um there is another edition um covering 1951 to 1960 so i'll have to look out for that got another one from yesterday uh clifford simak the werewolf principle again in the pan lozenge so adding to my collection that might be that's a pretty cool cover i really like that one uh, so in the middle distant future, Andrew Blake, discovered on a distant planet, huddled inside a capsule, is brought back to Earth, suffering from total amnesia. He's over 200 years old. He thinks and acts like a man, but become, becomes frighteningly aware of two alien beings that lurk within his body, a strange biological computer and a wolf-like animal. With the latter in control, he breaks out of hospital to look for his past. So uh, I don't know where that's going to go. Is it like American World for London? Is he going to start eating people? I don't know. That's a very eye-catching cover. I do like that and the format um, really helps, I think. Stanislaw Lem, The Futurological Congress, is a very eye-catching cover and it's in perfect condition, actually. Anybody that was concerned with having only pristine books in their collection, talking to you, Steve, would be happy to have that in their, on their shelves. I think it's in, it's in really good nick. And then we've got a Heinlein. I really have to check, because I've got dozens of Heinleins now. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of them, but... Um, I had to check my spreadsheet to see if I already had this. I don't, apparently. Uh, what's this called? Revolt in 2100, 2100. It is um, uh, not in brilliant condition. It's pretty old pan. It's tatty on the spine. Uh, priced at five bob. So that'll be from the 60s. First published in the UK by Golanx at Rin Hardback. And so this edition by Pan in 1966. Golanx didn't publish paperbacks back in the day. They licensed them out to other publishers and then we've got Larry Niven the world out of time I thought I had this but I don't um, I've got several other books in this format it's a US um, is a US format so I don't know if they they've just found their way over the pond or if they were if Del Rey um, exported them to the UK for sale here I don't know but this was published in 1976 I think it is a first edition paperback from the US okay and then we've got Fritz Lieber Fritz Lieber uh, is a spectre is haunting Texas <laughs> very strange looking individual on the front complete with what looks like a vampire cape so on the back it says it's a riotous caricature of a novel Fritz Lieber has a wicked imagination wicked enough to make us laugh an impossible future containing nightmarish aspects of our own time and that comment was from Edmund Cooper another Frank Herbert the eyes of Heisenberg spine is in pretty good condition probably not mint Actually, do you know what? I think it very nearly is mint. Yeah, a bit dusty. It probably needs a brush um, on the pages. But uh, but the text block. I mean, the text block is you know a wee bit faded. Um, but the pages are all in good condition. The covers in good nick. Fifty p. So it would be mid seventies, nineteen seventy six. Um, first published in Great Britain by New English Library in nineteen seventy five. That would have been a hardback, and this is the first paperback edition. Top banana. Right, so that was yesterday's little um, little find. So I walked out with 20 books and I was maybe 21 and I was 42 pounds lighter as a result, which is a non-trivial amount of money to spend um, in one go. But they're really nice books and they're all in really nice condition. So I think it's justified. Anyway, we're done. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time. Goodbye.